Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our second session this morning. Welcome to Caregiving 101. We actually have two speakers that you're going to be hearing from this morning. The first is Sarah Neller. Sarah is an adult geriatric primary care nurse practitioner at Baxter Medical Clinic and a professor at Lipscomb University. She received her uh, BSN from Harding University and her master's from Vanderbilt University. Previously, Sarah worked as a registered nurse at both Baylor University Medical Center and Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And then I'll go ahead and introduce our second speaker that you'll be hearing from. That's Kelly Tripp. Kelly currently works with Horizon Health, a na nationwide mental health company, as an interim program director facilitating in all areas, including clinical and administrative. Her education includes graduating magna cum laude in 2004 with a Master's of Social Work, clinical concentration from University of Tennessee, and graduating cum laude in 2001 from Tennessee Tech University with a Bachelor of Sociology, minor in criminal justice. So I'm at this point going to turn it over to Ms. Sarah. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. I am so excited to be talking to you guys about caregiving today because it's something that's so close to my heart as a nurse. So many times we have family members coming to us as nurses and needing to pass on that baton and as their loved one is in the hospital setting or is in a crisis. So today we are, Kelly and I are going to try to condense the wonderful world of caregiving into a 30 minute session for you guys. But we're going to be talking about um, some of the ins and outs of caregiving, defining who caregivers are, what their roles and responsibilities are, and how to care for caregivers today. So as Holly said, I am an adult and gerontology nurse practitioner. I practice down at the Baxter Medical Clinic, not too far from here, and I am also on um, a professor at Lipscomb University. I work with the Resource Center on Aging as a volunteer, which is a ministry of the Harper Hills Church of Christ in Brentwood, Tennessee. And it focuses on collaborative, faith-based care to meet the needs of the whole person, especially through aging or helping those in the community with their aging loved ones. How many of you in here today are caregivers or would consider yourself to be a caregiver? Okay, keep those hands up. How many of you have been caregivers? And how many of you anticipate being a caregiver in the next few years? Okay. <laughs> Caregiving affects all of us in one way or another through our lifetime. So let's start talking about family caregiving. Family caregiving is the act of assisting someone that you care about who is chronically ill or disabled or is no longer able to care for themselves. Family caregiving is such a huge part of what America needs right now in their health care system. Family caregiver service provided represent about 80% of all home care services. And that it's estimated that the home care services are valued at approximately 375 billion dollars per year. This is a huge thing in America right now and home caregivers are extremely important in our society, especially as we have this changing landscape in healthcare right now. Caregiving has changed so much from the beginning of time to now. Previously, in previous generations and previous centuries, People died at a much younger age. They didn't have access to as many medications. They didn't have access to advancing technologies that we have now. Now, you have medications at your fingertips, advancing technologies, and we are now able to keep people feeling better longer. We're able to keep them alive longer, and we're able to keep them alive even when they're past their prime. We're able to continue to support life and growth. But the thing that hasn't changed in that time is family caregiving. It is so important for the loved one and for the care recipient that they have people in their lives and in their homes who are able to care for them. So if you are a family caregiver, you're not alone. The National Alliance for Caregiving estimates that there are 44 million family caregivers in America today. That is huge. 44 million caregivers. 
So if you're sitting here today thinking, I am caregiving and I don't know what to do and I am alone in this, you are not alone. There are so many others out there who are walking the same road that you are walking. Rosalind Carter said there are four kinds of people in this world. People who have been caregivers, people who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. And I think that Rosalind offers so much perspective here on, on caregiving and the dynamics of aging population and the cycle of caregiving. Because I think that there is so much truth to this, that even if you somehow pass the bullet of caregiving, you yourself may need to be cared for. So let's talk about the many phases of caregiving. Who is a caregiver? Caregivers can be spouses, parents, adult children, a grandchild. We now live in a world where there are more generations living together than ever before. Currently in America right now, from birth to centenarians, those who are greater than 100 years old, there are six thriving generations in America right now. And that is huge. Not only that they are commingling together in society, but they're also living together in the home. Caregivers can be siblings, neighbors, friends. We also live in a time where individuals may live further away from family than they ever lived before. And it's so important that those individuals know where their caregiving peers are and where their support is. And that can often come from local support in, in friends and neighbors. So let's talk about the different types of caregivers. You've got non-paid caregivers, those who are family, friends, neighbors, and they can be local or long distance. And then you have those who are paid caregivers. So we'll discuss the various responsibilities and aspects of each type of caregiver. Local caregivers have responsibilities for those day-to-day -day living things. So you may not be a full-time caregiver, but local caregivers also have responsibility to swing by the house and check on mom, or go grab another bag of groceries for a neighbor and take it home. Often, this day-to-day this -day caregiving can often happen in a church capacity as well, where you go and you check on those who are homebound, and you help them with their day-to-day -day needs. Hands-on care can include nutrition, so either going to the grocery store or making meals, personal care, including hygiene, housekeeping, Safety, making sure that it's okay that they are living alone, that they are able to cook their meals safely, that they don't have loose rugs in their floor that could be a fall risk to them, making sure that they are able to get up and go to the bathroom at night by themselves. Often local caregivers are relied upon for transportation, for going to the grocery store, meeting those needs, going to doctor's appointments, and having that communication. So. Caregivers can be a, a vital part in being able to communicate the needs of the care receiver or the loved one to a healthcare provider, but also helping to communicate back from the provider to the loved one, because sometimes there can be a disconnect there, and it's so helpful to have a friend or loved one to be with them. Local caregivers also often have a financial and medical decision-making responsibility, so in life, as well as in the arrangement of debt. And so they are the ones often responsible for closing the estate or notifying the Social Security Administration upon debt. They can help with medications, whether that's picking up at a pharmacy or administering those medications. And it's so important that local caregivers know when to ask for help because it can be a, a very overwhelming task to be a full-time caregiver for someone. So there's so many resources available here through the Tennessee Coalition on Aging and Disability, through other online resources that we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, so it's important to know where to go for your support when you're feeling run down. There are also long distance caregiving responsibilities. So if you are a long distance caregiver, there's so much you can do for your loved ones or your loved one's care team. Long distance caregivers um, can often help with coordination of care. So that's coordinating the local family to go by and check on mom, or you've got Thursday nights to call and check to make sure that mom's doing okay, or you've got Sunday morning getting her to church or making the grocery run. Um, they can also help with paid caregivers to come and either have some respite time or relief time for those local caregivers. So that can be a paid service that they can 
offer. It's also important that local caregivers um, delegate some of their responsibilities to those long distance caregivers and give them some things that they can do so they can feel a part of the caregiving process. Long distance caregivers can also help with that financial responsibility as there are also um, many needs that can happen in the home that the local caregivers may not be able to afford or take care of on their own. And then they themselves can provide respite relief, so coming in and letting that local caregiver have a weekend off or a week off. And that can be so valuable to the care receiver or to the loved one who's there, to have the long distance caregiver come and spend time with them. If you don't have other support as a caregiver locally or long distance, or if you need more help, paid caregivers can be an option. There are a couple different types of paid givers. The first is a non-medical caregiver. So that's a non-licensed person who can come in for a few hours a day, a couple times a week, to help with things like light cleaning, bathing, cooking meals, sitting with the care recipient, so that you as a local caregiver can go and have an afternoon to do the things that you need to do in your house. You're light cleaning, you're cooking for your family, and you're gathering your groceries. There are also licensed medical home health people who can come in, and those are people who do have a license to be able to educate on things like medications, medication administration, they do things like wound care, they can also come in and um, do family group education. And there are care managers who are often social workers, they are wonderful people who can come in and help coordinate that care for the local caregiver when they don't know what to do and they don't know who to turn to. So care managers can help coordinate that care, improve communication among the providers and the home. They can also come in and help you make those difficult decisions. When you think, mom's fallen three times at home in the last couple of weeks. Is it still safe for her to be at home? Do we need to get her some home care? Do we need to get her into a facility? Case managers and care managers can certainly help with those difficult questions. There's also a respite care option. There are companies that provide non-licensed non sitters to come in and sit with your loved one so that you can have an afternoon away from home, but they sit and ensure the safety of your loved one. And a lot of these can actually be covered through insurances, so it's important to talk to your care recipient's provider about those types of things. Many times caregiving can be overwhelming, and the heavy load can manifest in a few different ways. One is guilt, another can be resentment for those who may be long distance caregiving and you feel that they aren't pulling their weight. Another can be from those who are local around you and you feel like you don't have the support that you need. You can have changes in family relationships through the strain and stress, sometimes between a parent and child, between siblings. Sometimes it's just that, that the stress of caregiving has, has changed the whole thing. And there can be financial burdens as well from, from choosing full-time caregiving. When caregiving seems overwhelming, there are some things that you can do to help. You've got to be able as an individual and as a caregiver to fill up your cup so that you can continue to fill others, so that you can continue to take care of them. So some of the things that, that are so important as a caregiver that you do are to take care of yourself physically, that you are still getting exercise, that you're taking care of yourself and what you eat and how you take care of your body, that you spend some time alone every day, that you are able to take time out because you are valuable as a person and it is so important that you take time to rest in your mind and that you take time for renewal, that you can rejuvenate yourself and strengthen your mind as well as your body. Be gracious to yourself when you feel like you're not doing enough, you are. And it's so important to remind yourself that you are there for that person. Your care recipient needs you, and you are doing a good job. Being gracious to yourself can, can aid in that rejuvenation process, where it takes some of the burden off and, and so that you're not so hard on yourself. And finding a support group can be so helpful for people. Um, support groups can be found at local churches local areas on aging. Um, they can be general support groups for general caregivers or disease-based. So the Alzheimer's Association has great caregiver resources. They have caregiver sessions and seminars on their website. You 
can learn how to be a confident caregiver or a savvy caregiver. They also have encouraging tips and helpful hints for caregivers that they post on their Facebook page and Twitter accounts every Monday. So if you're needing a boost or some, um, some new energy, some rejuvenation from them, you can log on to their website and get connected with that. There are also caregiving groups for MS, for cancer, and various other um, diseases that are there. If you're needing help plugging into a caregiver support group, that's something that the Tennessee Aging Coalition can certainly help you with, that we can help you with, and we can get you connected to those who are walking the same road you are. These support groups can be so, um, so helpful for people because there are those who have walked ahead of you. They're further down the road than you are, and they've experienced this, and sometimes they've lost their loved ones, and they're learning how to relive their life in a new role. Sometimes you're in that middle of the road and you can help someone else who's not as far as you are when they're just taking the first steps down this road and everything seems so overwhelming. These groups work together to meld all types of caregivers so that they can gather strength from each other. Rick C says, as our society becomes more successful, living longer and outliving our brains or bodies, loved ones are taking care of loved ones. It's a big issue that people don't talk about so much. But there's so much power and passion and influence in our society. If we can't deal with this in a smart and honest way, it's sort of an embarrassment for the whole society. The caliber of a great nation is how we deal with our seniors. We have an increasing need for caregiving in America, and I think that Rick's on to something more than just travel books, right? That he's got an insight into caregiving. So we need to be communicating about caregiving. We need to learn to ask those hard questions in order to keep growing in our capacity to care. So in order to face crisis, we need to be able to talk about hard topics. We need to be prepared to age and be prepared to die. And some of that involves having those conversations now about your living will, your power of attorney, and talking with your loved ones about the ways that you want to go in the end, the way that you want to die with dignity. It's so helpful to have these papers with you if you're hospitalized or if you're going to a healthcare provider, but it is more important that you talk to your caregivers, you talk to your family, you talk to your children, to your spouse, to your friends about your wishes so that they can, in a crisis mode, Remember what you guys have talked about when you were pre-crisis so that they can help you build those wishes. It's also important to know yourself. When is it too much? When do you need to rely on that support? You may be rocking and rolling as a caregiver full-time at home, but then a crisis comes and you're not able to handle it. And no one should handle it alone. So know your limits, know yourself, and know where your resources are. And know that you are not alone. Remember, there are 44 million caregivers out there, and you are one of them. So there are so many out there who are able to come alongside, take your hand, and help you through it. So Kelly's going to come and talk to us about how to cope daily as a caregiver and how to deal with some of those stresses of daily caregiving.